start off by talking about side jobs. It's legal somehow in Pennsylvania to be both a state legislator and something else. Senator Jake Corman is a full-time legislator. He is full-time. We give him a six-figure salary. He has great health insurance, an incredible pension, a free state car, $200 a day per diem, but he needs another job. And his other job is that he's on the board of Old Dominion Bank. He is on the board of directors of a very profitable, large Wall Street bank. Can you imagine the conflicts of interest inherent in that? Can you imagine him thinking, well, why should we raise taxes on Comcast when we can just borrow money from my bank and pay interest on it? Can you imagine the conflicts of interest when tax rates for banks come up? So who is he working for? Well, technically, Old Dominion Bank. So side jobs are when you hold two jobs at one time. Let's talk about the revolving door. The revolving door is when you work in the private sector, then you go into the public sector, and you go back to the private sector, and you just keep going back and forth, back and forth. So it's very common in Harrisburg for legislators to retire and become lobbyists, and then to retire from being lobbyists and become legislators. Actually, it usually doesn't go that way that many times. It's more common to be a <laughs> lobbyist, go into a, a legislator's office, be a lobbyist, and then go back and forth that way. And so Jake Corman, his chief of staff is a man named Christian Callahan. Christian Callahan, until September, was the top lobbyist for Maverick, one of the most notoriously corrupt lobbying firms in Harrisburg. Before Callahan was the chief was a lobbyist for Maverick, he was the chief of staff for Mike Terzai when he was the majority leader in the House. So Corman's chief of staff has been in and out on both sides. So again, I ask the question, who does he work for? Let's talk about Maverick for a second. Maverick does this amazingly corrupt thing, where they will raise money for your campaign, then they will run your campaign, and then they will lobby you on behalf of their donors. So for example, Maverick will raise money for Jake Corman, will run his political campaign, and then will go into his office on behalf of Comcast, and on behalf of Range Resources, and on behalf of Wawa, and on behalf of whoever Ooh. pays them money. Ooh. And when Maverick comes into the office, they're sitting across from their old guy, their buddy. So they kind of are on both sides of the table to begin with. So who works for who there? Does Corman work for Maverick or does Maverick work for Corman? If Corman says no to Maverick, well then he's going to lose his seat. They're not going to raise money. They're going to sabotage his campaign and he knows that. And so who does Corman work for? He works for Comcast. He works for the people who pay Maverick. Another way that money gets in is through campaign fundraising. Senator Corman raises money I'm not exaggerating here, from everyone. From everyone. His list of donors is all the usual suspects. From the frackers, to Comcast, to the health insurance industry, to Wall Street, everyone. From every type of boss you could imagine at any corporate table, Foreman is getting money from them. And I'd like to focus really quick on two donors in his district. The Shaner family. The Shaner family build hotels. They own a golf course here called Talk Trees. Jake Corman, we know this is your favorite place to golf, and we'll see you there this summer unless you pass the gift van. And we'll see you on the 18th yeah. hole, and we'll see you on the first hole, and we'll see you at your fundraising dinners there. That's right. At Talk Trees, the fundraisers are sponsored by Glenn Hallbaker Incorporated. Glenn Hallbaker Incorporated is in a lot of trouble right now. Apparently, they've been stealing wages from their workers for the last 20 years tens of millions of dollars in wage theft. Jay Corman, these are the people sponsoring your fundraisers. These are the people you call friends. They're definitely not friends to the people of Pennsylvania. Are you? So 
sometimes it doesn't even have to be campaign money. Corbin will raise money for dark money groups. Ooh. And sometimes he'll do it at the same time as he's raising money for his own campaign. Last year, out in Palm Springs Golf Course in California, one of the most expensive and ritzy spots on the planet, it just so happened that Senator Jake Corbin was having a fundraiser for his campaign in the same exact place at the same exact time as there was a fundraiser for the Club for Group, which is about as dark money as it gets. On, at that fundraiser for his campaign, oh, and I should also say, the dark money fundraiser was put on by a woman who works at Maverick, and the campaign fundraiser was put on by her husband, who also works at Maverick. They obviously didn't coordinate, right? No, no. <laughs> I don't think they did. At that fundraiser, Corbin brought home at least $119,000, including $10,000 from a horse racing tycoon. Could this be why Pennsylvania gives $250 million a year to the horse racing industry? Most of that money ends up out of state in the pockets of horse racing owners who, who do not need that money. Shame! For comparison, Shame. we spend $200 million a year on public health. We get $50 million a year more to horse racers than we do to public health. Shame! Shame! At that fundraiser, he brought home $5,000 checks from a number, a large number of low-wage bosses. Sheets, Walmart, Wawa, etc. So is it any surprise that our minimum wage is $7.25? No. Is it any surprise that we can't even bring it up to 15 let alone to what a living wage is, which is $24.12 an hour in Pennsylvania? No surprise. Senator Corman, who do you work for? So this money, it gets raised. What happens to it? We don't know. We do not know what happens. Between 2016 and 2018, $73,000 of campaign expenses for Senator Jay Corman were untraceable. We don't know what they were for. Journalists spent weeks digging into them and uncovered a couple of the purchases. So here's what we do know. A couple thousand dollars went to liquor. We know that $200 went to a limo ride in New York City for the annual Pennsylvania Society Dinner. Let's take a second to talk about that dinner. Every year, the Pennsylvania political elite go to New York City for the Waldorf Astoria to get wined and dined and bribed by big money interests. This has been happening since the 1890s. Every year they go when Senator Corman goes, and he gets bribed. And apparently, now we know, he also drives around in a limo there. But the rest of that 73,000, we don't know. We do not know. We do not know what's happening. So if you want to get money into Corbin's pockets, there's a lot of ways to do it. Give him a campaign contribution. It'll disappear. Just hire him to be on the board of your bank. Pay him that way. Pay his friends around him. Make him hire your friends. There's all sorts of ways that this corruption happens. 